Silkies are a smaller um, variety of chickens. They're a bantam breed, which means that they are a smaller chicken. The um, males, or the roosters, are typically about four pounds. This guy's a cockerel, so he's still growing up a little bit. Um, so he's a little lighter, but he will grow it to be about four pounds. And the females are typically about three pounds. The thing about silkies is that they have a walnut-shaped comb. And what I mean by that is if you look really closely, it's kind of a walnut. She's a little girl, so um, her comb is not as prominent. But you can see it's walnut-shaped, and it's also like a deep mulberry or a dark red in color. Here on this guy, whoopsie, he's freaking out a little bit. But you can see here on him, his comb is a little bit more prominent. It's a mulberry. And you can see that walnut comb. See here on this guy, it's more of a deep red, but the walnut shape is a little more visible there. Okay, so most chickens usually have four toes, right? Silkies actually have five. If you look here closely, there's one, two, three, four, five. They have this extra one that kind of pops out right there. If you take a look underneath, she has some poop on there because she has feathers, so it's easy to get poop on their feet. One thing about silkies, it's a little bit hard to keep their feet clean. Silky's feathers actually resemble fur. They're like really, really soft to the touch. Um, it's almost literally like you're petting a dog. They do have, you know, some regular feathers like a regular chicken, but it's a little bit different because their feathers aren't so feathery. They're honestly like more furry and fluffy. So everything on a silky besides their blood and their feathers is black. Um, so that means that their skin, their bones, their muscles, they're all black. It's really interesting. So you see her feet, or black. If you look here through, it's really hard to find anywhere on a silky to show their skin, but there's some pin feathers and the black skin. Silkies have blue earlobes. Sometimes people will come over and look at my chickens and be like, there's something weird on that chicken's head and it's like this bright blue teal thing. It almost looks like earrings or something. So if you look closely through all her feathers, and I'll have to find another one where you can see it better, but you can see the blue earlobes. Let's pull someone else out and I'll show you. Okay, so this rooster, super bright ears. I don't even have to pull back any feathers. Looks like he's wearing earrings. They're so pretty. <laughs> so silkies usually take a little bit longer to mature and start reproducing. Um, most chickens around like five, six months will start laying their first egg and being able to reproduce. Um, silky sometimes, you might notice, they'll be like seven or even eight months and still haven't laid their first egg. They also are not very flighty birds, so you won't really see them like really hopping over fences or flying around like some other chickens will kind of fly like a little bit. Um, they usually will kind of stay on the ground. They also, so sometimes like mine, they'll usually to sleep, they'll just kind of pile up in a corner. They don't really like hop up anywhere to roost. Some will, the roosters will, <laughs> no pun intended, but um, for the most part, they kind of just like pile up on top of each other to go to sleep. Okay, so let's talk about cold weather and warm weather. A lot of people think that silkies don't do well in the cold because of their unique feathering, but actually their body temperature is about 107 degrees, which means that they tolerate cold better than they do heat. So that means you really don't, unless you are in really extreme cold temperatures, you really don't need a heater in the coop, a lamp in your coop. You're only opening yourself up to potential fires and things like that. So that could be hazardous to the chickens. Um, they do well. They figure out how to maintain their body temperature and to keep their warm. A lot of people, <laughs> to keep their warmth. A lot of people even say that they're like little furnaces. So in the cold temperatures, you really don't need to do much for these guys. They figure out how to self-regulate it. I mean, unless they're baby chicks, um, they don't need any additional heat. So the best thing that you can really do for them is to just make sure that they stay dry and that they don't have a draft. So make sure it's not really windy in their coop, that if you have windows, they're closed. If there are any openings, make sure they're closed and make sure they stay dry. And in winter, they should be good. In extremely hot temperatures, they could possibly have heat strokes. So heat is actually where it's a little bit more dangerous for silky chickens. So down here in Florida, especially South Florida where we are, um, that's why heat is a little bit more dangerous. So, you know, we um, installed two windows into our shed for some cross ventilation. And we also have a fan in there to blow out some additional heat as well. And I make the nice little, uh, you know, frozen treats for the summer. They love watermelon. Watermelon keeps them hydrated and cool. Um, so there are a lot of things to do for chickens in the extreme heat. So, but we'll talk about that later.
milkies for the most part are difficult to sex really until they lay an egg or they crow. Um, it's really hard to tell out of the egg what color they are unless they're sex linked. Um, but once they hatch, it's really difficult until they're probably about like five, six months. Um, this one is about three months or so, and I can definitely tell that she's already a girl. Um, she doesn't have any streamers growing in. Her head is literally just like a giant pom-pom. If you look at her comb, it's still really tiny, nothing prominent. So I know that this one's a girl, um, but most of them, you don't get so lucky and they aren't that easy to sex. Another thing about silkies is that they are super docile. A lot of people actually have them as like house chickens um, for the most part. I mean, unless you get like a teenage Roo and he's kind of like jumping around, like just being kind of like annoying. <laughs> um, they are super calm, friendly. They love to be snuggled and held. Um, they'll run up to you for treats, that sort of thing. So they make really, really awesome chickens. They're great for kids, but the roosters can be a little bit testy. But for the most part, super, super nice chickens. Silky hens will lay about between 100 and 120 eggs a year. So it's roughly like three or four eggs a week. Sometimes you'll get one that literally just cranks like one out every day. You'll get lucky, I've noticed that. Um, I have a couple that do that. Some of them it's literally only like one or two eggs a week. So you kind of just gotta know your own individual hen. Um, but for the most part, they're really good layers. They are really, really good moms. They go broody a lot. So you have to be careful because they will constantly be in that nesting box trying to hatch eggs. Um, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> You're like, stop being broody. But um, they love to be mamas and hatch babies. As far as free ranging goes, I usually don't free range um, my silkies unless I'm supervising them you know many predators like hawks they're so tiny um, especially the females they are so little like I said they're four pounds um, this one's a pullet here so she's still growing um, I don't, I'm not sure if she's even laid her first egg yet but you can see she's little a hawk could completely pick this up and take her away um, if you have other predators I don't know coyotes bobcats whatever you have wherever you live um, they're just so tiny that they're more susceptible to getting taken away by predators so I don't typically free range them I know people do nothing against it but that's my personal preference Another big one is raccoons. Um, we have raccoons here all the time. I've never had an issue, but they have those little tiny fingers that can get into your coops. That's why while we're on the topic right here, hardware cloth is the best thing that you can wrap your entire run and coop with. Um, just make sure that everything's covered with hardware cloth because they will go around trying to find anywhere to get in. Um, they're a big, big one. And another reason why, I mean, sometimes I know they're only like nocturnal animals when they come out in the night, but I've heard so many horror stories of them literally coming out to your property during the day and just taking your chickens away. I personally prefer to um, just keep mine enclosed and then free range them when I'm supervising. Okay, so thanks for watching and always come back for more. We'll have plenty more tips and um, how to do things and DIYs and all that jazz. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Beautiful. Great. Great show, everybody.